So for this week, we're going to get started thinking about our rhetorical listening essay. And in order to help you, start, so let's look at the discussion. So for this next major assignment, the rhetorical listening essay, we're officially going to start writing that paper in lesson seven. So we're going to spend lessons five and six getting ready. So for that paper, you're going to reflect on essays from this, I believe. And you're going to engage in rhetoric listening. Remember from the content page earlier this week, we talked about rhetorical listening as listening with intent to understand. So that's what we're working to do. We are thinking about how can we understand the author and the circumstances that shaped his or her life. So those circumstances might be sociological, they might be political, economic, environmental, or historical. So think about rhetorical listening as an opportunity to understand the self and others. So in other words, when thinking about how we promote understanding, think about the essays that led to new insights. Was there an essay in particular that had you thinking a little bit more? You're like, I didn't know that or consider that or think about that. And rhetorical listening also means that we proceed with an accountability logic. So in other words, when thinking about an accountability logic, think about the circumstances or events that shaped a writer's life. What events, um, moments in their life, kind of where the, the path might have forked and they went one direction as opposed to another because of circumstances maybe beyond their control or circumstances they put forward in their life. Um, so think about that kind of logic that plays out in somebody's life or experiences that led them from point A to point B. So for this discussion then, select an essay from This I Believe Volumes 1 or 2 and respond to the following questions. In order to help us get started to write this paper that we're going to start in lesson seven, we're going to begin practicing talking about your This I Believe essay that you've chosen. And in order to do that, we're going to do it in the following discussion. So some questions to think about. Was there a specific essay that surprised you? Was there an essay that made you feel uncomfortable, anxious, or frustrated? Was there an essay that made you feel hopeful, optimistic, or relieved? And in those essays, what political events, what historical event kind of shaped that writer's life? What ethical challenges did they face or environmental or economic influences were shaping that writer's life? And how did privilege shape the writer's experiences? Now, sometimes privilege is a word that we don't use in kind of day to day conversation. So, privilege would be those. Um, factors in our life that kind of move some barriers out of the way. Or if we don't have privilege, it might put some barriers in front of us. So for example, you know, thinking about privilege through the lens of disability, um, we might say that somebody is bound by a wheelchair when really they're not bound by a real wheelchair. They're actually, they actually find mobility. Their, their life is able to, uh, move in new directions, and they're able to go places and do much more than they ever would have. What they were disabled by then isn't necessarily the wheelchair, but the disability is when we only have buildings with stairs to get into them, or when we don't have restrooms that are handicapped accessible because they're too narrow for a wheelchair. And then a person who uses a wheelchair can't access a building or they can't use the restroom when they get inside that building. So it's not the wheelchair that's disabling. It's the circumstances that we've put in place that limit a person's ability to access their environment. That's what's disabling. So in this case, coming back to privilege, me being a person who is not physically disabled, I have privilege because I don't have to think about how am I going to access this building? How am I going to get inside? How will I use the restroom? I have the privilege of having an able body. And therefore, I don't have certain obstacles in my way. So looking at the essays, is there one that demonstrates privilege, that the author had privilege that others don't? Or does the author overcome certain barriers because 
he or she didn't have the privileges that other people had. So that's what we're going to think about for this week. We're just doing some kind of brainstorming or reflection to get started to write our paper in lesson seven. So the only essay that you can't write about this week is Temple Grandin's, and that's because I'm writing the essay about Temple Grandin. So for drafting your discussion, right, I want you to maybe look ahead and review the final assignment requirements for this paper, but also think about this as a low stakes opportunity to reflect and brainstorm, ramble, solicit feedback from your peers and from me. So for your original thread, you're going to post about a 250 word, two to three paragraph reflection on one of the essays, answering the questions above. And if you're struggling to develop your discussion, you might also look at the guidance in the writing toolkit on developing your discussions. After you've completed your thread, you're gonna reply to two of your classmates' postings. So rather than seeking to change someone's mind, seek out more information clarification, or elaboration. And this assignment will be evaluated as a completion grade, so the purpose of the assignment is to give you an opportunity to practice academic writing in a low-stakes environment. So one original thread is a 33, one original thread plus a reply is a 66, and one original thread plus two replies is 100. But it has to meet the requirements of the assignment. So let's look at my model. I went ahead and wrote this, uh, this assignment too, along with you, so that you can see my thought processes as I'm working through rhetorical listening as it relates to Temple Grandin. So let's look at my discussion post for this week. One essay that resonated with me was Temple Grandin's Seeing and Beautiful, Precise Pictures. In the essay, Grandin describes how, as an autistic woman, she understands abstract concepts by thinking of them in concrete images and sounds. Because she is autistic and understands abstract concepts such as life, death, love, and nice in concrete ways, she took that understanding and applied it to her work, creating humane slaughterhouses that eased cattle's anxieties and suffering in the moments leading up to their death. Now, notice here what I've been doing up until this point That's just summarizing Grandin's essay, not doing anything else. That's just a quick two, three sentence summary of Grandin's essay. But if all, if that is all that I did, I wouldn't be meeting the requirements for the assignment. The other thing I have to do is carry it one step further. I have to summarize and then I have to analyze. So let's look at my analysis. And I even tell you, here's what I'm doing. Thinking more about the sociological circumstances in the cattle industry in the 1970s, I think that it must have been exceptionally difficult for an autistic woman to work in that industry at a time when people weren't concerned about animal welfare, disabilities rights, and women's rights like they are today. You know, thinking about this essay, I can't imagine in the 1970s that there was a, a, a conversation about animal welfare and women's rights like we have today. And that must have been really difficult for Temple Grandin to navigate. It's, it's really a testament to her perseverance and her ingenuity and her creativity that she was able to kind of work at the intersections of both disability and gender and animal welfare in a field that was really probably predominantly male. So Grandin's work and experiences shaped the conversations about the ethical treatment of animals and in turn, the ethical treatment of the autistic community. Now, this is where I start to think a little bit more about Grandin's essay in light of my own circumstances and my own experiences. Thinking about trying to understand where Grandin is coming from a little bit more Her essay was not entirely or especially surprising to me because I have an adult 20-year-old autistic son named Toby who is also very literal and struggles to understand abstract concepts. For example, notice I'm giving you a specific example. My son is not able to answer what and why questions because the answers tend to require more abstract thinking 
there are too many different variables and responses. So instead, we have to frame questions in terms of A or B, yes or no, one or two. So rather than asking him, what did you do at school today? Or what did you, what do you want for lunch? We instead have to phrase questions like, did you go to art or PE? Or did you, do you want pizza or a sandwich? So thinking about Temple Grandin's discussion on abstract versus concrete, I see that often in my son's life as well. And thinking about Grandin's essay further, notice I'm telling you what I'm doing. I'm telling you that I'm digging down just a little bit deeper and thinking about it. It makes me feel hopeful. Notice I'm coming back to these questions here, right? Did an essay surprise you? Did it make you feel uncomfortable or did it make you feel hopeful? So I'm, I've talked about this one and I've talked about this one. Or we could also say maybe one right here. So let's return. Thinking about Grandin's essay further, I feel hopeful because Grandin's experiences have shaped the world for the better. She gives a voice to people like my son who aren't able to communicate their needs and desires as eloquently. While Toby may never live independently as Grandin does, and he will never earn a PhD as she has, he, is, he has a meaningful and happy life with friends, a job, and support because people like Grandin changed how society viewed people with autism. So if you'll notice in my essay, I have summarized Grandin's essay very briefly in a couple of sentences. I've told you I'm thinking about the sociological circumstances. I've told you how it makes me think about my own circumstances. And I've told you about how it makes me optimistic and hopeful for the future. So those are the rhetorical moves that I employ in my discussion about Temple Grandin's essay. So you want to select an essay of your own from either volumes one or two and engage in rhetorical listening in this discussion forum in order to help get us set up and 